What's going on, everybody? I hope you're doing good. Welcome back. Now, I realize it's not the normal night we usually do Bible study, but I wanted to jump up here real quick and go through uh, a lesson from our series, The Original Game of Thrones. Now, if you were with us last time, we talked about that epic battle between David and Goliath. And for many of us, this was probably our favorite story from the Old Testament. And why not? This is an awesome story. It's got great characters. It's got a satisfying climax. In fact, it's even got a, uh, an unexpected hero. But if we're not careful, I think one of the things that happens is that we overlook the aftermath of that story. In other words, what happened afterwards? How did David react? How did he respond to the success that he achieved on that battlefield? Now, most of what I'm going to talk about tonight is out of 1 Samuel chapter 18, and it all hinges on one little Hebrew word that shows up a couple of times in this chapter. And quite honestly, I'm indebted to Charles Swindoll and his book, David, A Man of Passion and Destiny, uh, for most of what I'm going to talk to you tonight about. Um, if you look at chapter 18, it opens up with David and Jonathan, Saul's son, becoming very good friends. In addition to that, David is enlisted into Saul's army, and he becomes kind of part of Saul's special forces. He's sent out on you know, maybe covert missions or important battles, things like that, and, and he's able to win a lot of these skirmishes. And upon returning home, what happens is that the people begin to sing David's praises. And they do so in such a way that it's a, a kind of a, a diss, a backhanded disrespect to Saul. They say David has slain his, or Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. Now, of course, Saul does not like this. And one of the things you're going to see in this chapter is this constant contrast between David and Saul. For example, what you see in verse 5, and this is where we get to that one Hebrew word, is so David went out wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely. Now, that's one, that phrase is actually one Hebrew word, and the root of that word is sakal, which is S-A-K-A-L, I believe. That's the way you say it. That may not be the way it's spelled. And basically, that word could be translated wise, behaved wisely. I like the way that sounds. Some translators use the word prospered. Now, if you look at that word, you find that it's used in the book of Proverbs. Two places specifically, uh, Proverbs chapter 10, um, verse 19. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. That's the word, sakal. And that's telling us something about David, that David knew not to boast. David was a man who knew how to keep his mouth shut. And it'd be very easy for David, with all his successes, especially the victory over Goliath, to want to toot his own horn. But the Bible says about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says that love does not boast. It does not push itself forward. And David was a man who knew how to keep his mouth shut. A lesson that every one of us should learn. In addition to that, if you look at the word uh, again in Proverbs, you find in chapter 21, verse 11, it says, When the scoffer is punished, the simple is made wise. But when the wise is instructed, the sakal person, he receives knowledge. And that tells us something else about David here, is that David was a man who remained teachable. He did not let this success go to his head, but he remained humble and eager to learn whatever he could to become a better warrior, maybe a better king one day, whatever it may be, David was a man who always remained teachable. Again, two lessons that I think all of us should learn. Don't let success go to your head. So always know how to kind of dial it back. Keep your mouth shut. Don't brag too much. And always remain humble and teachable. A couple other things that are interesting about this. Again, you got this constant contrast here between David and Saul. So David behaves wisely. Saul was very angry in verse 8 after the people were singing David's praises. It says in verse 12 that Saul was afraid of David. It also says in verse 9 that Saul eyed David. In other words, viewed David with suspicion. So, and then in verse 14 it says, But David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. And I'm telling you, if you want the Lord to be with you, remain humble. Keep your mouth shut. Be teachable. One little thing I want to tack on here. Uh, I thought this is, I, I can't leave this chapter without making mention of this. What we see uh, at the end of this is that David is going to marry one of Saul's daughters. Of course, the firstborn daughter is who he was originally going to marry, which would kind of put him in line for the throne inadvertently, uh, even though he was already the next king in waiting. 
however, he gets the younger daughter. And then Saul kind of pulls one over on him. He was supposed to get him for killing Goliath, but Saul kind of pulls one over on him. And what Saul does is he says, look, I, I want you to bring me back. Now, this shows you how brutal people were back in this time. Bring me back 100 foreskins from the Philistines. And so he sends David out on this mission, which I am sure Saul thought this was a suicide mission. But the Lord was with David, and because David was sakal, because he was behaved wisely, uh, because he knew how to keep his mouth shut, because he remained humble, because he remained teachable, the Lord continued to be with him even when he was deceived. And the Bible says he brought back not 100, but 200 foreskins. And I think he did so just despite Saul. With Saul. And it goes again. on, if you look at verse 28, and Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David. And Saul was still more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. And then the princes of the Philistines went out to war. And so it was, whenever they went out, that David behaved more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name became highly esteemed. Hey, let, ever, let other people do your bragging. Always remind yourself, I got something to learn, and God will be with you. God bless.